friends. Welcome to Growing with Creekside. This morning I am outside bright and early to get a quick little project done. Of course, here we are in North Carolina, Zone 7B. It is early, mid-October, and this is a fantastic time to go ahead and get some perennials and trees and shrubs in the ground. So I am having the most fun in these couple of weeks getting lots of plants into the garden that I've been wanting to add. So what we're going to do today is we are going to um, add some Pearl Glam Beauty Berries to the backyard beds here that we have just developed within this last spring and summer. I love these plants. I had some over at the nursery, but I don't have any here at the house. And so I want to add these into the landscape because they give us just three seasons of color. They are a great plant. Um, and I'm going to show you why here in just a little bit, but here we are on the back patio i thought we would walk over to where the plants or the shrubs are going to go into the ground but along the way i wanted to show you some fantastic looking plants that are doing great right now even here we are and like i said early october you can see that the sun is starting to come up and look at all those beautiful colors on the trees. I love it. So we still have annuals that are just going strong here. We've got the Sun Patience Compact White. The Cleome is doing great. This is the Senorita Blanca. And of course, the Supertunia Mini Vista White. So we're coming back through the patio and um, the garden, the deck boxes, uh, they're starting to look a little bedraggled, but overall they still have nice color. So I'm just going to leave them until the frost probably gets them. Then down here we have the diamond snow, Euphorbia is doing really well. And then an update on the succulent planter. Now that we're starting to get some cool temperatures, the colors are really starting to pop. I only lost one. Um, hen the mother right here I only lost one out of the whole container so i think we're doing pretty darn good but look at those beautiful colors is that not just stunning and gorgeous oh my goodness this has been one of my favorite planters this season for sure and speaking of planters if you remember it wasn't that long ago just a couple of weeks ago we planted up the weston urns from a unique stone with the ms america mustard and some violas and man they are doing great they have really filled in the containers super super happy about it but as we move down through the patio um, and coming on down where we are going to add the pearl glams is in the back of this bed right here because that will give me some really nice height and structure back there year round and I love these plants. If you're not familiar with beauty berries, they get their name. Um, it's really hard to imagine how they got their name. So let me, let me show you. Of course, I'm teasing you. Um, I have one right here. We are not planting it right here. This is just where the sweet thing ended up. But here is Pearl Glam, and you can see those gorgeous purple berries that are just covering this plant. It starts out as really sweet white flowers in the spring and summer. And then as the season goes on, they turn to berries. So this is Pearl Glam Beauty Berry. And like I said, we're gonna add three to the back of this bed. Now, I am gonna go ahead and try, try being the operative word, to go ahead and dig out my purple fountain grasses. These fountain grasses are most definitely an annual for us. They will not survive our winters. As soon as a frost comes, a freeze comes, they will, you know, be killed and they're out of here. So I don't feel bad about taking them out because I know there's no way that they're going to survive in this flower bed. They are gotten so big. I did not realize they were going to get this massive. And then we had Hurricane Ian come through with that wind. It really just kind of kind of split them and pushed them open. And they're encroaching and crowding out my shrubs and my perennials that are in this bed that will come back. So the ones that are not staying are leaving and the ones that are staying get a chance to grow and develop a little bit more as this season goes on. So we're gonna dig those out, but first we're gonna run up to production and we're gonna grab two more beauty berries so that we can add them to the landscape. So let's go for a little ride.
so obviously we made it up here to production and the lumber is being delivered for the new building behind the greenhouses that uh, massive project that we are undertaking this fall and winter so you can see that the truck is behind me we're having a meeting of the minds back here with the fellas and then um, here comes the little fella who is putting the lumber down. So we're gonna take a quick little detour before we grab those pearl glams. Let's go see uh, what kind of lumber is being delivered because I know it was a truckload, but I don't know exactly what was on that thing. So here we have all sorts of good lumber. There are, <laughs> I don't even know all the sizes. I'll just show you the great delivery. Of course, these posts will be for, you know, the actual structure and holding everybody up. Once we start building, I will come back up with the fellas and Jerry and um, give you all the specs. But yeah, alrighty. So lumber is here being delivered. Remember, this is going to be a... Um, a 22 by 78 so 22 feet wide by 78 feet long structure that's going to connect all three of the two greenhouses and the dry storage we will use this for production and all sorts of other items here at the nursery so this will be a great enclosed weather sealed you know climate controlled area that we can work and get lots of great stuff done so little unexpected detour this morning so now we're gonna go grab those pearl lambs so here we are up on the production shrub lot and we're gonna come grab two more of the beauty berries I will show you this this is sugar shack uh, we've talked about this before it is a great button bush but look at that great fall color of course this is a little bit more exposed out here so beautiful fall colors gotten those cold temperatures on it and then right behind it are all of the pearl glams and you can see just they too are taking on some fall color their um, leaves have darkened up a little bit but lots of beautiful little berries look at that isn't that great all right so i'm gonna grab two more and then we're gonna go get these sweet things in the ground I've got the two programs in the back of the Polaris. I also went ahead and grabbed my biotone, my power planter auger, shovel and a rake, and then of course my handy dandy tool belt that I have on that has all of my necessary tools. Let me flip the camera around. I wanna show you what I'm talking about with the grasses. So here we have those purple fountain grasses and you can see how it's just kind of, it's splayed open, it's just getting big. It is covering up my Americana agave, which is very happy in this spot. We've got all sorts of sweet little pups in there. So I need to get this grass out so that I can see exactly what is happening with all of my plants. This is the area right here where we're going to put those pearl lambs. This is where I had the Saturn sunflowers for the summer and they did great. But we're going to go ahead and plot those three in in this space to fill in. I will still have room to put my annuals, but before we plant the pearl lambs, I really do want to get these grasses out. That way I can really get a feel for the bed, what it looks like and the spacing and those grasses won't be obstructing my view. So <laughs> this is going to be interesting to see how how extensive these root systems are hopefully they'll just pop right out of the ground but I'm not that optimistic
Okay, my friends, that grass was no joke. I had a feeling that it was going to be quite a beast, and it was. So now we can see exactly. I have three peonies right here. So, the, of course, this is that time of year where they are starting to go dormant. Their leaves and foliage looks very tattered. It's okay. That's the normal process. I do have the cages that, like the support cages. I really didn't need them this year, but it did help keep Brenna off of them. So that was a good thing. I'll probably just take the tops off and leave the stakes in there. That way I'll know exactly where they are come spring. And then the agave is doing really well. Got lots of pups around that. Um, so this just opens up my space so I can really see what I'm working with. So I've got one done. Two to go. Whew. Who says gardening is not a physical exercise? <laughs> not this morning. Alrighty, so I was trying to beat the sun. It didn't happen. So the sun is out in full force, but it's nice and cool, so it feels great. So we're gonna do the best we can with the camera. I got all three grasses out. I got them thrown into the back of the Polaris. They were nice and wet with dew, so Jenny is an absolute disaster right now. I've got mud and damp clothes and everything, but that's all right. So the grasses are out, and I have gone ahead and placed the beauty berries. So I want to walk you through and kind of explain why I placed them where I did and my thought process behind the whole thing. So here we have, this will kind of give you the, the idea of the whole bed, right? So we've got lantana, which is an annual. Then we've got the Okami cherry tree. We've got all sorts of, um, I've got the double play doozy spireas in there, butterfly bushes, um, lots of gorgeous, of course, echinacea. I've got the fairy trail brides, and I have my hanoki slender with grasses and all sorts of other things in here. You will see that I have placed these three pearl glams in a bit of a group. And when you're looking at it, you may say, well, Jenny, why did you not just spread them all the way across the back evenly like you said you were? Well, because um, I have an Americana agave right here. This was came from my mom. Um, it's one of the few agaves that I know of in our area that is a perennial. I will not have to cover this. It will just um, overwinter and will do great. Clearly, it loves its spot because it has five pups around it. So when an agave or mangave um, sends out little babies, those are called pups. That is a sign of a very happy, healthy plant. I think I'll have a picture here of my mom's um, agave, but it will be huge. So it will really fill in this whole area and of course it is an evergreen so imagine as we back out of the bed um, that we have of course you'll have the tree 
in the winter time, you'll have the sticks of the beautyberry, and then of course during the growing season, you'll have that, um, the whole bush. And then you've got the hinoki slender, which is gonna be an evergreen. And then imagine that Americana agave filling up this whole area. And then I have three peonies back over here, what looks to be like an empty corner. It's not an empty corner right there. So imagine three luscious full peonies right there. So what you see is maybe not what is actual reality. So I went ahead and placed these in the semi a bit of a triangle. Let me flip around and show you exactly how I placed them. This angle might be a little bit better that you can see. The beauty berries will get four to five feet tall and wide. I space them four of my feet apart from each other so that they will grow and they will um, touch each other at maturity and then the only one that I'm a little bit worried about might be the one in the center because it is close to the spireas. I did not trim the spireas, so they need to be pruned. And both of these shrubs will, the, the doozies and the pearl glam will, um, bloom on new growth so they can easily be pruned so what we're going to do is just go ahead and uh, get my power planter auger i'm going to dig my holes and get them in there i do have irrigation in this flower bed so i will need to make sure i do know that i saw one irrigation line um, don't want to hit the irrigation so I will pull that back make sure there's not an irrigation line exactly where I want them to go um, so dig the holes biotone I think these are probably going to be a little bit pot bound so I will break up those roots and then get them all nice and snugged into the ground So I have all three of the pearl glams are in the ground. They're nice and snug. I'm not watering these in because they were, they had just gotten watered on the shrub lot. So they were nice and very, very saturated. And the thing with pearl glams is that they like well draining soil. So even though the irrigation line is running right beside all three of them, you will notice that I planted them high. That's the thing with our clay soil is you don't want them to be even or heaven forbid, like below the soil level because our clay soil is great because it holds moisture. However, if plants don't like to stay in really wet conditions, you need to raise them up so therefore they can shed and the water sheds away from the crown of the plant. 
So that is why we plant things a bit high in the clay soil, but they are all in here very happy with how they look. Um, I think they're just going to be really fun and add a great color, texture, height to this flower bed. Now, before we leave, there's a couple of things that I want to show you. Um, where we have the cherry tree, we used to have a crepe myrtle there. And if you have ever dealt with a crepe myrtle, you know that they can often send out suckers. So everything that you see right in here, all that glossy green foliage, those are all crepe myrtle suckers from the tree that we dug up mm, two years ago. So if we let them, there's a weed right there, it's a thorn, but if we let them, they would try to grow up to be another crepe myrtle tree. Obviously, I do not want this in my flower bed. So even if I were to take my clippers and just cut them, they're gonna regrow. So just cutting them is not gonna kill them. Um, I have shared my little trick with you before. If you have plants that are coming in, they're sending out runners, or you have a massive weed that is growing right in the middle of your flower bed or right in the middle of the plant, what you can do is we're going to cut it with my pruners um, as low to the ground as we possibly can, and then take your herbicide of choice in a cup, a little glass container, whatever it is that you have, do not dilute it. Leave it full strength, then have a little tiny little paintbrush and you cut, I mean you paint only the cut that you have done. Um, you can do this very responsibly. You are not poisoning your ground. You are simply killing that one particular plant that you cut and that is the most effective way to get rid of these quickly, efficiently, and safely. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this cleaned up. I'm going to show you what a massive difference look-wise it makes. Okay, my friends, so I've got all of the suckers from the crepe myrtle. They're been cut back. They have been treated, so they will not come back anymore. It makes a huge difference. You can actually see the mangave and the daylilies and then the white muley grass that is behind it. <sighs> makes it look clean and neat and tidy. I tell you, it is, like I said, you know, early, mid-October. I am ready to start obviously winding up the garden and getting the annuals out and kind of putting these beds to rest so that all of my shrubs and perennials and trees can have a nice winter's nap and let their roots grow and be nice and happy. I know that somebody's probably going to ask about the mangaves. So just as a reminder, I do have, um, I think there's like six or seven mangaves in these flower beds and the mangaves are not cold hardy for us. If you remember way back in, I guess, gosh, spring, early summer, what I did was I did a pot in a pot. So the mangaves are planted in a three gallon container. And then I think you can see maybe the white line is the irrigation line. Then I buried a three gallon pot, slid the mangave down inside of it. So it appears that the mangave is planted in the flower bed but they actually are not. So before my first freeze, before the, you know, the really cold sets in, I will lift these containers out of the pot that's in the ground, and I will probably, because these are so massive, I will put them in one of the greenhouses so that way they can stay there over the winter. Not that the greenhouse is gonna be heated, it's just that because I have six of them and they are so large, I just need somewhere to put them. They can hang out there. If you have a garage, you can put them in your garage. I do have mangaves that are in like little small containers. Those will come inside and I will use them as house plants during the winter. And then come spring, everybody comes back out and enjoys the nice, what is that? I don't know, nine months outside. So we will have them um, taken care of, but I know that somebody was gonna ask about this one. I believe this one is actually racing stripes and it has grown by leaps and bounds, very happy. But I am just overall really pleased with how this bed has turned out. The pearl glams are gonna be a great addition here. They're gonna be nice height, fill in, give a little screen right there. It gives me still some room to have some other, you know, low annuals in here. But it's hard to believe that we developed and created these beds in the springtime. I think I have some pictures of us doing it. So these beds are not even a year old yet. Is that not crazy? I mean, look at this. You know, this time last year, 
these flower beds were not here. The cherry tree was here and the ginkgo we planted about probably this time last year. So there's a ginkgo right here. That's a century. It is a male ginkgo, so it will not be stinky and drop little seeds. And then the maple tree, um, which is starting to show, show some color, it was here as well. Everything else was created. The beds were formed and everything was planted this year. So not even one year's growth and these beds are here and doing great. So stinking excited about them. And um, it's just so much fun to constantly, you know, be tweaking and adding and putting in some more shrubs and perennials. Ah, so it's fun about gardening. All right, y'all. Uh, so I'm going to go get some clean clothes on because I am a hot mess. I am covered in mud. I did not anticipate being so dirty today, but hey, it's not gardening till you get dirty. Y'all have a great day and always thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.